When setting solar panels on your racking system, it's really important to plan things out ahead of time because if you don't, this is gonna happen to you. So we also make videos here on our channel showing you the mistakes that we make. And in my haste to get these panels on the racks, we flip some of them. And let me tell you why that's important. So if you didn't already know, most solar panels are already pre-wired with these MC4 connectors. One is a positive connection and one is a negative connection. And to connect to the next solar panel, as you can see here between these two, you need to have them in proximity to one another. So the negative on one side and the positive close to it. Because if you don't do that, then you're gonna get two negatives next to one another or two positives and they're not gonna connect together. And if you're thinking, well, maybe I can just stretch it far. So let's unhook this. It all depends on your solar panel. It will not reach up here just off the screen. I've got about 10 inches between the positive on the this solar panel here and the negative on this solar panel. So, so in my extreme haste to get these panels up on the racks and get this system going, I did not think about my strings. And I didn't think about the positive and negative terminals on each one of the panels as they sat next to each other. Which means I'm going to have to flip some of the panels around, which is not going to be a good day. But it's what I got to do to get those strings in the proper configuration. So let me show you the drawing that I did that you absolutely need to do when figuring out the configuration of your panels. So right here, I made a quick sketch of the configuration of our solar array. It is four panels wide by five panels tall. And our panels are going to be wired in series, which means that we will add the watts for each panel. The amps stay the same and you add the voltage also. And if you use Watt's law, Watt's equals amps times volts, you see all those numbers work out together. We're not gonna do a string of four, we're gonna do actually two strings of six and a string of eight. So the string of eight will go directly into one of the inverters, but these two strings of six over here need to be wired in series parallel. So each string of six is in series, and then they will be paralleled together so that the voltage of those two strings does not exceed the voltage of our 5K grow watt inverter. This one over here will have a total of 327.92 volts at 3,520 watts. And these over here will have a voltage of almost 246 volts at 5,280 watts. So both of those numbers are perfect, or all four of those numbers are perfect actually for our grow watt inverters. So as you can see, I'll have three separate strings of panels, two sixes and the eight. All those will go into a combiner box. The string of eight will go to one inverter and the two combined strings, uh, the series par paralleled strings will go to the other inverter. And something really important to keep in mind when running things in series parallel is you have to have an equal number of panels on each string. So for us, the two sixes that will go together in series parallel are perfect. We could have done a, a five, five, seven, seven, but the six, six just kind of worked out the best for us. The number of jumper wires that I have is not enough. So it would be enough if I was to just run this as one whole long string in series, but I'm going to need some extra ones to connect those series parallel panels, those two sixes that I have, and the distance that I have from the panels over to where I need to put a combiner box is greater than anticipated. If you haven't already done so, I want you to head over to Signature Solar. You can click on the link in the description below. And they've got some great deals on everything that you need for your entire system. And they are very helpful for DIYers who are in the process of setting up their own systems. So it's not really gonna matter where I put a combiner box on here because I'm still going to need extra wire to be able to reach wherever that is. Now, probably the best spot is in the center of the array here. I have five columns. This is the center one. But we calculated the long, or the, uh, long PV wires to be about 100 feet, and that is gonna stretch it to the absolute max, if it even makes it at all, over to this box. So I'm probably going to need some longer wires or some jumpers 
on those PV wires that'll run to the house also. So that's something you're gonna need to understand if you're doing it yourself and you're going to a supply house like Signature Solar. Now they're very helpful, but the little nuances like that we didn't talk about and we didn't figure out ahead of time. So if you can do it in your head, great, but I'm a visual person. So I recommend to everybody to plan, plan, plan and draw, 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 everything drawn out. And as you can see on this drawing here, we even did a little positive and negative on each panel that we have in the array to understand how they connect together. And I should have done this before and paid attention to which orientation each panel went. Now, something that I'm gonna be adding to the system, and if you watched our last video, uh, we're gonna to add to the total cost a little bit by about $170, give or take. We are gonna be adding a PV combiner box. And we are doing that because we need to add some SPDs or some surge protection devices, which were brought up to me by a subscriber. And we had a really great long conversation about the vulnerability of some uh, systems to lightning strikes. Now this whole array here is fairly high on the property and it's all steel. So it's going to be an attractant potentially for lightning. And even though the grow watts have surge protection on them, it's potentially not enough to handle a lightning strike on the panels. And I was going to put some inline fuses on the positive strings so that if I did get a surge or a short circuit in one panel, it wouldn't affect any of the other panels. And I was thinking that that would also handle any surge toward the house. But that surge is going to be an amperage and it's going to be delayed on a fuse by potentially about one second. That fuse is not gonna stop an overcurrent. So if I've got a lightning strike on it and there's a delay in the fuse, it's gonna let those volts through into my equipment on the inside and that's not a good deal. So I will be adding the fuses on the positive PV wires going into the house and then I will be routing them through a combiner box with surge protection devices that will protect from over voltage going into the equipment in the house. So I think having all those things is important in your system for redundant protection of everything. So like I said, it's about an extra $170 for the combiner box for the number of strings that I need. Actually, I'll get a four string just so I can add some more in the future. And the three fuses, I think they're $12 a piece. So do the math and add that to what my total was in the last video. Also add some extra PV wire, which isn't terribly expensive. And we're gonna show you in an upcoming video how to crimp your own MC4 connectors on your new jumper wires if they don't come with it. And we'll do a whole video on crimping and adding lugs to wires and things like that as well. So in your excitement and haste to set up your solar system, do not forget to plan out your panels because it's gonna add extra work to the job. Now, I've gotta to get to flipping some of these panels around. Now, I want you to go check out this video right here, which shows you exactly how to set up and construct this Powers Solar Frame Solar Rack. Have a great day, we love you. See you next time, bye.